We're now going to talk about processing categorical inputs. Uh, so far we've been looking mainly at numeric inputs uh, and now we're, we just looked at uh, some ways of uh, reducing the number of inputs with principal component analysis. But one of the ways we often get a large number of uh, input fields is in processing categorical inputs. Uh, so let's look at that. So again, uh, information that we have put, uh, coming into our model is usually stored as either numbers or strings. And the strings uh, can often represent categorical data. So that means that the strings, you know, we have just a set of names or labels. Uh, it's a finite, usually, set of uh, labels, discrete labels. Uh, here, so like the months of the year, or like dog, horse, uh, turtle, set of of pet types, and often there's a you know a data dictionary that might define what the legal uh, categories are for this. Uh, we could have like grade, you know, they could be small, like just letter grades here, uh, or blood types uh, for this. Uh, often like just products uh, here that you're trying to sell, or clothing types, something like that. Um, now, just so you know, there, there are other types of uh, string data, strings of characters. They can be just, you know, strings of words like uh, like tweets or, you know, text from uh, some other social media thing. They can be just paragraphs. Uh, they can be DNA sequences, stuff like that. That's generally treated for sequential data, and we're going to look at that later. So we're going to ignore this larger sequential data, and we're just going to be looking at data that is strings of characters that are labels. Uh, 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 in a finite set of discrete labels here. Okay, so when we look at these, it's important to decide if they are ordinal or nominal. So what does that mean? So sometimes there's an applied order to these things. Uh, and so that if they're applied order, they're ordinal ordered uh, here. So like the months of the year, January, February, March, they go in an order uh, here and we start with one and generally go to 12. So we generally always number them the same way and stuff like that uh, here. Actually, in machine learning, sometimes we do treat these a little differently because they wrap, but uh, that's an example. Uh, another one would be like grades. Uh, you could have your letter grades, A, A minus, B plus. And again, we might, we don't always have to assign these ordinal ones just uh, integer numbers. Uh, they can be, uh, again, just like uh, 4.0 or 3.7, 3.3, 3.3 uh, 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 here. Uh, so it, again, we're just assigning some numeric value to each of the labels and there's an order to them. Um, now, sometimes we, we can try to apply an ordering to them, but there isn't really an order. So like this dog is one, horse is two, turtle is three, hamster is four. We could give each uh, label a number. That's fine. But this can cause us trouble because all of a sudden when we start comparing these, a the machine, the computer starts comparing them, it starts thinking that, oh, cat is very close to cow because one's five and one's six but cat's very far away from dog because dog's one and cat's is six here and it's you know it's a difference of five here and only a difference one and so uh the computer likes to it, it when it has numeric values often subtract the numeric value or you know compute distances with numeric values so you know you start asking what's the distance between a you know difference between a cat and a turtle uh here and that doesn't really make sense uh in this place where you could ask you know what's the distance between February and April or you know which what is closer to an A minus an A or a D uh, there is an order there but some of these there isn't an order they're just categories here so how do we handle these nominal categories so again no order here we, we tried to create an order but there really isn't one these nominal uh, things how do we assign those so what we generally do is uh, Give, do what is called one-hot encoding on these. So we take a species or you know a single field like this, like pet species, and we'll create a separate field for each of the possible labels. So what are the different types of pets? We have dog, horse, turtle, hamster, cat, cow, whatever here. And so we create an extra feature, and then we'll just put in a one if that pet is a uh, dog, or a one if it's a horse, and then zero otherwise. So like if if this is a each uh, row here is like a different pet, there's always going to be one hot one, one one uh, in each 
row here and that's why it's called one hot encoding so it's always things like zero 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 one meaning it's a hamster and not so basically we're saying this pet here is not a dog it's not a horse it's not a turtle it is a hamster it's not a cow and it's not a cat here so we have this encoding for this um, now that will um, expand the number of features so we might have a set of um, features here um, for pets. We might have the pet name, uh, the pet height, the pet weight, and the pet species uh, here. Now these are numeric values, so those are not category, those are nice. The pet name we probably don't even need to worry about, we're probably going not, we can maybe ignore that uh, here. Um, but um, the pet species is a category, so we're going to break that up. So this database data set will be broken up into again we leave pet name pet height and pet weight these are two numeric fields and again this is more like an index or something like that but this pet species we're going to break it up into um, six different fields with one hot encoding so alvin is a chipmunk here she weighs uh, he's seven tall 15 whatever units in weight He's not a dog, not a horse, not a turtle. He is a hamster, so there's a one there. He's not a cow and not a cat. So we use this one hat, hot encoding for Alvin. Where Scooby is a dog, so uh, we have a one for dog and a not horse, zero for turtle, not hamster, not cow, and not cat. Okay, so that's what we use for one hot encoding. We often, we can write these as dummy variables. Sometimes we actually just store them in little arrays. So like Scooby would be written this way. Uh, and it, there's an, apply, an ordering here. Uh, so it would be one, zero, 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 zero. And then Alvin the chipmunk would be this. Where's Alvin? Zero, 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 one, zero, zero here. So. So again, that's just a, a way we'll use uh, frequently for managing categorical variables, especially when we get to uh, more advanced models like neural networks, we'll need to do this sort of process uh, to feed it in. Now, there are some models that can handle categorical models, like uh, often um, decision trees can actually work, some decision trees can work with um, these labels like this and can uh, can manage that. But uh, most uh, models, uh, can't work with this categorical data. We need to convert it to some sort of other data. Now, we can generate lots of dummy variables with this. So let's say we just have a, a database of pets, and for every pet, we keep track of the, uh, the state they're from, the county they're from, the city they're from uh, here. So for each state field, there are 50 states, at least actually when we had territories and stuff there are more like 60 um, but uh, let's just say 50 so every state uh, this the one state field would be broken up into 50 dummy fields one for each state uh, here uh, there are over 3,000 counties in the United States so again one hot encoding would create 3,000 dummy fields one for each county uh, similarly, there are over 15,000 towns in the United States. So now we're, now we're getting to this huge database where uh, we have like 18, over 18,000 uh, fields. And much of them are just zeros, and then there's just a one. So, there, you know, we have uh, 15,000 towns and just one one at times. So, again, sometimes this is just isn't a good way of, of doing things here uh, for this. So how can you manage this? Um, one way is to ask yourself, what are you storing there, and can, is there a numeric value you can store instead? So rather than storing the city, state, and county, you know, can we just store something like, are we just worried about the position on the map? Can we just store the latitude and longitude as just two numbers? Uh, those numbers would kind of help us if we're going to calculate how far north or south or east and west something is. We can use latitude and longitude to do that. So then uh, that's a much better way of encoding this day. So anytime you can replace categorical uh, data with um, numeric data that has similar, you know, that gives you the encodes kind of the same sort of information 
uh, here. You know, so like if you're looking at pets and you may want to know how cold it is or how far north or south it is, you know, probably you could start, say, you know, install encode the state so that, you know, a pet in Minnesota is going to be different than uh, a pet from Texas as far as the needs and what it's used to. Uh, but again, la latitude and longitude would have similar features to it uh, as far as the latitude goes. Okay, so besides that, um, another way is to look for places where you might have uh, complex uh, categories that can be broken up. So often in, in um, products, we have things like medium blue t-shirt uh, or extra large sweater here. Uh, and so if you start looking at all the combinations of products here, there are just thousands of products uh, here. And that would generate thousands of dummy variables to keep track of them, where it's probably uh, easier to just break this up into maybe the, what is this, the size, the color, and the, the type of, sh of object here, of clothing. So maybe there are just 10 different colors and five different sizes and six different types of clothing. So then rather than including encoding a thousand different possible combinations of, you know, medium blue t-shirt and medium white t-shirt and medium yellow t-shirt and medium blue pants and medium yellow pants, you know, all those different combinations, you can encode the ca these individual features uh, and you'll get much fewer categories and then much better one hot encodings. The last thing you can do if you can't, if none of those help, there are times where you just have to do um, this sort of encoding is to look and see if you can use uh, dimensional reduction. We talked about PCA and applying PCA. Now, PCA, principal component analysis, we didn't talk about too much, but it really is set up to work with continuous values uh, or, you know, values over a wide range. And, but with one hot encoding, we generally just encode things with either a zero or a one. So something is either a dog or not a dog. So we have a one or a zero for dog or not dog. So when we're encoding things like that, they're, they're, that's not a great, uh, it doesn't work out well for our principal component analysis sometimes. Um, and how it works. And so in general, if you just have a set of fields that are all encoded, uh, all one hot encoded of the same basic thing, and there's only one, uh, one in each, and all the rest are zero, principal component analysis is really not going to help you much. But if you have a more complex data set where you have lots of other variables in here and they're all kind of, you have a lot of different numeric values here, principal command analysis can sometimes find uh, ways of, you know, of encoding this uh, better uh, here. Maybe some way of encoding the size, height, and weight of a pet along with its species uh, here might be helpful uh, for this. So, um, now this is a kind of complex and still up in the air kind of d discussion. So if you're looking for uh, like a discussion topic, you might want to just Google principal component analysis and one hot encoding uh, here. Uh, it's interesting to see some discussions on that. If you're interested in looking, you might also want to look at kind of beyond the scope of this, but or this course is multiple correspondent analysis, which is a more complex way of doing uh, dimensional reduction with this sort of discrete value stuff. Okay, so that's a quick introduction to how we handle categorical data and in particular how we can often use one hot encodings to break categories into a whole set of features encoded that way. Hope you enjoyed this.